Hello, dear internet user. I wanted to tell you a story no one asked for and some other things. I thought about two purposes. First, feedback can get me inspired to focus on what I almost abandoned, which upsets me a lot, by the way. And second, you can get inspired to start something or return to something you've forsaken. For me, it all started in 2012. I was in the middle of a crisis of kind of experienced electronic musician. I tried seemingly everything but couldn't find a way to make the presence of myself surrounded with my cute little machines on stage less pointless. I had been playing live shows and loved it and I still consider them a major source of inspiration. But I didn't feel right being on stage because all my fancy machines could play music without me and no one would notice any difference. Also, I felt that the album I was working on missed an unknown crucial something the key component that would lead all the mesmerizing soundscapes I created away from being just pointless and beautiful structures into the world of deep emotional storytelling, let's say. Back then, somehow I befriended a bunch of great Icelandic musicians. One of them was the best violinist I ever known, at least personally. Not only because he knows how to make his violin sound perfectly full and mellow, but also because he was open to experimentation with all kinds of electronic stuff. I fell in love with the sounds of his violin, his melodies, even though before that I considered violins faulty instruments, usually sounded thin, nasty, and I liked violas much more. A bit later, one of my closest friends decided to start learning to play violin while being kind of an adult already. I was surprised and struck by her courage when she started. A few months later, I was so impressed with the progress, I thought she's done something impossible. I don't remember what happened first. I realized that violins can sound cool because my Icelandic friend or my closest friend astonished me with her progress, but altogether it kind of turned me to my very old idea of a project with dark, otherworldly synthetic textures mixed with a reckless, mellow sounding violin. I decided to start learning to play violin myself. It was a crazy, wild, and even imprudent decision, I would say now. Actually, I would say the same in just a couple of months after my first lesson. Well, I can't remember myself regretting it all. There were many moments when my eyes were opened again and again, and it was always kind of painful. About half a year since I started, when I had learned some basic stuff, the initial joy faded away, and I realized that getting further required far more time and dedication than before. My second year started with the realization that I had almost not progressed for these last six months. Which wasn't true, of course. What actually happened is that my hearing skills improved a lot and I became just became aware of how terrible I was playing by then. You see, physical skills require far more time than mental ones. My third year started without a teacher even. Because I ditched my old full-time job, it was a state company and I state was getting worse and worse, so at some point I just couldn't stay there anymore. For half a year after that I couldn't understand what I wanted to do and where I wanted to work and participate in some projects as a freelancer didn't provide enough money, so basically I wasn't able to afford violin lessons anymore. For a year I was kind of lost, practicing only not to forget all I had learned. The fourth year started with the famous book of Suzuki. That was a breakthrough, suddenly I was progressing quickly. I then started reading notes with an acceptable swiftness. I listened to the recording while uh, reading and pronouncing note names until I was able to silently read a couple of notes ahead. Only then I allowed myself to take the violin and start playing pizzicato, reading notes at the same time, pronouncing their names silently until I was able to follow the pace of the recording and read a couple of notes ahead. Finally, I allowed myself to take the bow and follow the same pattern, reading notes while playing with the recording until I was able to read notes ahead. And the prize was permitting myself to play with the recording of the accompanying piano only, and not reading notes at all. I finished almost two books like that. The first was really easy, but still I could feel that my skills improved a lot. And the second was fun. These were a couple of months of visible and joyful progress. Then something bad happened and I got stuck again. By that time, I had already been trying to use the violin in my own music. Honestly speaking, it was very difficult not to try to compose and record something just after the first lesson. If my memory isn't fine, I at least managed to keep the bow away in such cases for a month or two since the first day. Because I'm not really proud of the violin sounds in these tracks now, 
though not only because I don't like how the violin sounds in there, but also because it's, uh, it was a very weird time. I had been kind of lost musically, and uh, I was afraid that I forgot how to write music, so I started a new anonymous project where I limited the number of instruments I was allowed to use, and the time I had one for one track. I had to upload it to the internet the same day when I started it, and it was all very lo-fi, obviously. And here are some of them, by the way. Another outcome of my unstoppable desire to utilize new skills as soon as possible was playing the violin live with my band Chaos Keeper. That's what I wouldn't show anyone if not in this video, because it sounded either just bad or terrible. These were not my parts, but the vocalists, and I was playing them just because I liked the idea and he couldn't sing while playing his viola anyway. Time helps in many ways. For example, now I'm able to bear showing these whole things to you. I wouldn't be able to show it back then, of course. Sometimes it was not that bad, but still not too impressive. And in studio conditions, it could be opaque. Still dull musical points, but do you regret it? Of course not. I'm happy I went through all of this. Usually in such video blogs, people show their progress in the form of home-recorded practice videos. Unfortunately, I only started keeping them in 2015, three years after I started. And I had not been recording them often, even though I had been thinking of starting a video blog about all this many times back then. So here's one of them from 2015. and another one on the same day. Here's one from 2016.
here's 2017. And 2018, the last one of this kind. It's almost impossible to notice the daily progress when you're learning to play perhaps the most inconveniently designed instrument in our planet. Don't be me and utilize the luxury of our times. Everyone has a decent camera inside their phones nowadays. So you record yourself, watch and listen, yourself play and you'll see a few mistakes that you can't notice while playing. And from time to time you can check the progress comparing new videos with the uh, ones filmed some months ago. You'd be pleasantly surprised if you practice regularly. And by the way, I think recording lessons while you practice with a teacher could also be very useful. Our minds, our memory are far from perfect, you know. But giving advice is easy most of the time, and following your own advice is much more difficult. There were times when I had been filming myself regularly, and there were times when I hadn't even been practicing for weeks, because life, you know. So let's get back to one of the reasons why I started this story. Adding a very expressive instrument to my musical palette. I heard the early sketches I created just after I started. And here I wanted to show you the first violin bass track I was very proud of when I finally finished it. It was not that difficult to compose, it's never too difficult when you allow yourself to be inspired and set creativity free. But it was so difficult to record the parts they came up with. Uh, take counter showed something about 2000 on some of the parts by the time I was satisfied with the results. It's not perfect in terms of intonation and articulation, of course. It was composed about five years after I started learning. Uh, about a year was spent on re-recording it, practicing the strokes, listening, re-listening, re-recording again and again. And I didn't stop because I thought it was perfect. I stopped when I thought that the imperfection don't stick out anymore. And that's another important piece of advice that I can share. Nothing can be perfect. There should be a moment when you have to stop polishing your creations. You constantly grow and change while working on your art, so if you don't stop yourself, you can spend your entire life on perfecting a single thing. So let's check the progress. Here's the earliest recording of the violin played by me, spring of 2013, half a year since I started. Here's something else, a year later with a much better bow, by the way.
Another year later, a new violin, spring of 2015. Two thousand sixteen. Perhaps by this time I found the strings I really like. In 2021, composed and recorded in one day. That's where I found out that I can fix missed notes of recording. Most recent one, nine years since I started. Let's talk about instruments a bit. Obviously, if you're not incredibly lucky, you start with an inexpensive and a simple one. Often people choose it with their first teacher, or better say, their first teachers choose their first instruments. I chose my first violin with my old friend, a violinist from that band I mentioned earlier. Later I learned that usually violinists can help making jokes about poor, unlucky violinists. Both of my teachers did that every time I mentioned my friend and how he helped me to choose my first violin. Neither of my teachers proved of the bow, but both said that the violin was decent despite costing just about $250. It was a violin made by Garanok, a Russian manufacturer well known in St. Petersburg. They make their starter violins from parts produced by Chinese factories. The history of the company is quite interesting, though quite typical among luthiers of the Soviet Union. Google it if you have time. I changed uh, the bow in my second year, because the first one was really holding me back, but what could you ask from a $30 bow? I bought a new one for about 300 which uh, my second teacher chose, my, chose for me. Still the only bow I have, but um, while I stayed for a couple of weeks in Germany in 2018, for some reason I decided to try local bows and violins. 
I wasn't lucky to find interesting violins, but bowls I tried, which mostly cost about 2000 euros, sometimes made me feel like they played me, not I them. Since then I've been thinking about another upgrade, but, well, you know, prices frightened me. There was a day, uh, perhaps in my third year, when I felt extremely annoyed because my right arm couldn't do what I wanted it to. Perhaps uh, I was completely broken today because at some point I just threw that poor ball to a coach in anger. But it didn't just like that. It ricocheted and fell to the floor. That's how I broke my first ball. It's tip split. It was mended perfectly in this Karanok workshop. You wouldn't be able to spot anything. As far as you know, it doesn't make the ball worse, only reduces its price. So I was happy that the problem wasn't too serious and it didn't cost much. Still, it fixed some impulsive aspects of my relationships with instruments. I have become much more careful, even when very angry. Maybe there's something wrong with me, uh, but every time I start using some new technology or an instrument, I want to get to the root of all related knowledge. I think knowing how it works internally can help to find the most effective ways of using the tool. Same happened with violin, so obviously. I was looking for knowledge tirelessly, torturing local luthiers with lots of questions whenever I had a chance to talk to them. But uh, then maybe there's something wrong with Russian luthiers. But uh, unfortunately I ended up uh, thinking that most of the time the internet, and especially YouTube, can help me to find answers much better. You have to be careful, of course, uh, but here on YouTube you can find some documentaries where the whole process of making a violin is shown in all detail. There are recordings of luthier meetups and so on. You can learn a lot about your instrument from these videos. I guess it's time to return to my story. One of the things that uh, has been helping me to keep going is that I precisely know why I need this. It's been 10 years now since I started, and I guess I could learn far more than I have. Could perhaps even become sort of a proper violinist by now, but I couldn't. There were many reasons I didn't practice for weeks and even months sometimes. Dangerous political situation in my homeland, my desperate desire to leave it as soon as possible, the toxic atmosphere that poisoned my creativity and drained energy, I've been practically a zombie since 2014, with some short awakenings every now and then. So, I'd say the progress I made could be easily achieved in four or five years in a good country with decent quality of life. Of course, there's no ideal country and life may suck everywhere, but we are the ones who are responsible for what we focus on. I often think that if I had closed my eyes and stopped thinking about what's happening around me, I could be much more productive, but for some reason I couldn't. I don't know if that's my fault or not. Anyways, what makes successful people successful is A. Luck, and we can do nothing about this, and B. Tenacity, where we can do at least something. Not that I'm considering myself successful, but I'm still practicing from time to time, even though the last few years I practiced maybe only 1% of the time I should have spent on practicing, in my opinion. I guess. Around the fifth year I reached the level when I could not play for weeks, then practice for a couple of days and restore the level. But before that, skipping a few days often led to going back weeks and even months, so I say persistence is very important, especially at the start. But again, not that I consider myself successful. And I even thought about leaving it many times, especially during recent years. They were so difficult and dark, I even thought I should forget about music at all. What kept me going, I don't know, but somehow the look of the instruments I have makes me want to play them. That's uh, stupid, of course, and I guess any economist would say that if I haven't achieved anything substantial for so long, I should find a better way to spend my time and resources. That's the reason why I think when choosing a musical instrument, the first thing is obviously the sound, but the second is you should only get the one which appeals to you visually, because you know, musicianship is crazily difficult and quite often feels futile if you think about it uh, critically and rationally. And the beautifully looking instrument will help you in such situations. When I sold one of my rare and fancy synthesizers, a beautifully looking machine that was just way too heavy and didn't have anything I couldn't emulate in a computer, I decided to spend the money on a new violin. I went to the workshop where I tried many old instruments. 
I didn't ask anyone to come with me so I'd be able to hear the violin from a distance and that was a mistake. But at some point uh, where I was ready to leave, Aluthia brought a beautiful looking violin covered with dark varnish and some scars. I fell in love with it instantly. I didn't care that it weighed a bit more than a distant violin should and I didn't care about the scratches. It was the only violin that I heard from a distance because the luthier decided to introduce it to me. And when I tried to play it, for some reason, my inexperienced fingers did a perfect job. Also, the sound was very mellow, even while the violin was just an, under my left ear. Now I don't think this is exactly how it should work, though. This violin doesn't have any labels inside. Experts think it's a basic violin produced by a French or German factory in the first half of the 20th century. And it's completely wrong by violinist standards. But even knowing it's totally imperfect and basic, I love how it looks and feels. And that helps. And the sound is also very nice and mellow, though any luthier will say it's all wrong because it, its decks don't resonate properly. I partly fixed that with good strings, again, annoyingly surprising Russian luthiers with my choice of very expensive strings for an inexpensive and wrong violin. I still dream that one day I will reach the level when, once feeling sad and nostalgic, I would take my violin and play something very sad and mellifluous, be it a classical piece or an improvisation. I believe I'm quite far from that. Even the most beautiful compositions for violin that I was able to learn don't sound very musical to me while I play. But I still like the look of my violin. It helps me to return to practicing to keep going. Completely unreasonable, I know. I guess I should somehow sum up what I have reached by this day. I wanted to use the violin in my compositions, but without samplers, because they obviously don't allow the same level of expression. I believe about three years ago I was already quite fluent in terms of violin language, let's say. Obviously, I'm still endlessly far from being a virtuoso, but being a very good sound designer, sometimes I can say good things about myself, it helps achieving interesting results even with my current level of playing. At some point, I also broke the curse of recording. I rehearse a part and it sounds okay, then I hit the record button, start playing, and it suddenly sounds like you have not rehearsed at all. The fix was quite easy, actually. I decided to try to tune the violin part using the built-in smart pitch correction in my digital audio workstation. And it worked quite well. But what surprised me later is that knowing I can fix it after recording somehow helped me to play better while recording. Imagine how stupid our brains are. Maybe that's not for everyone, of course, but I heard about this recording problem from two or three of my teachers. Earlier, I noticed uh, many times how my friends who I was recording started making mistakes when I hit the record button. So yeah, we're pulling our stupid brain for the ring. When I was only starting, unintentionally, I found kind of an objective, Jean Sai and his six sonatas. I wanted to learn at least how to write such things. Of course, I understood how unbelievable it'd be to reach his performance level, which of course doesn't mean I can't allow myself to dream, right? Obviously, I'm still nowhere near this objective, but I believe I've made some noticeable progress, at least in terms of composing. I talked to many people about his sonatas, asked what's happening in there, got answers and kind of grasped the idea. It's not like I wanted to recreate his sonatas or write something similar, of course, just understand what's com what compositional tools he used and so I would be able to use them too. I wanted to perform on stage. I'm far from being confident when playing what I have composed, because it's usually uh, far above my playing level. But in 2020 I participated in a jam with some synth techno gigs in St. Petersburg. My violin wasn't dry. I used some weird reverberation, delays and granular looping, but it sounded quite interesting even to myself. I didn't even notice missed notes. I was leading a kind of an orchestra of machines with my violin. That led me to thinking I'm ready to perform and they tried to play some of my experimental synth and violin pieces for a couple of weeks after that jam. Just to find out that one week of rehearsals was far from enough for me. And I haven't played publicly since then because of Covid, uh, life, aka okay, depression, and now the war, so nothing has changed since then. Maybe it only has become worse because those were two years of uh, not practicing for months. Even though I restarted lessons about a year ago, but stopped after a month or two. Still, I think improvising with electronic musicians wouldn't be a problem for me, even now. 
One of the main things when you learn to play an instrument is to become connected with it as if it's your voice. I think I reached this level at some degree around the fifth year. I noticed it when I tried to start playing Ravel's vein using notes of Rachmaninoff vocalist. Being puzzled for a few minutes uh, embedded the notes language, uh, you see. So sometimes something like that happens. Here it happened again when I was trying to record the video of me trying to play the plane to show how I sound when I didn't practice for some weeks and then uh, I decided to start playing again. By the way, here's how I sound after practicing for a couple of days after a long break. So, well, I think it's time to wrap it all up. I started my violin journey 10 years ago. During the first three years, I had been trying to be a proper student, practicing at least three times and having two lessons a week. The first time I reached uh, that famous plateau was at the beginning of the second year. Then Suzuki's book injected some life into me again. The fourth and the all following years were all broken and chaotic in terms of learning. To be honest, in terms of life too, but um, I progressed and even managed to write some music I'm proud of. Was it a smart, well-thought-out decision? No, I can't say that. But you see, the whole life is so random, you just can't make sense. You plan something, and then it's COVID. You plan again, and then it's only a war started by the government, not you nor anyone else in the right mind who voted for in your country. I life, I said, I know precisely why I decided to start it all. Even the idea of this video was a random and inexplicable impulse, which for some reason kept me awake browsing old hard drives and search for old practice and concept videos from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. that same evening when it appeared to my head. Only on the second day I realized it is autumn, uh, it'll be 10 years since I started this journey. I didn't plan this. I could, but at the same time, I just couldn't. You cannot know where ideas can lead you. You can only do what you like and don't do what you don't. Well, I guess it's time to stop this stream of consciousness. I'll put some useful links in the description. You're very welcome to tell me what you think of uh, anything I said here, whether it was useful or completely useless, or maybe, I don't know. I'd be happy to know, really. I have never created anything like this before. So, well, have a wonderful day.